Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, all of you uh, solar eclipse survivors, everybody who uh, got a chance to see it last night, everybody who was you know, pumped up about it. And uh, since we all made it through, uh, this is going to be my post solar eclipse podcast, my first one. Uh, and I'm very, very happy to have a, a wonderful guest join me today that we um, first spoke, uh, I believe it was last week or a week before and talked about what we might do. Uh, and we're here basically sort of to uh, try to do a little bit of a uh, introduction podcast to, uh, to, to Jordan, uh, and of course, what he does. So I guess I'll um, pass it over to you, Jordan, and let you uh, sort of welcome yourself to the crowd. Oh, thanks, Paul. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me on the show. It's, My pleasure. Uh, it's fantastic to be here. Uh, a little bit about me. So people, uh, you know, they have an idea of you know, who they're listening to or, or viewing or watching, whatever it may be. Uh, my name is Jordan McGregor. I've been a, a realtor for uh, about 14 years now. Um, a lot of experience in real estate. I've been involved in some form of real estate investment uh, or acquisitions, dispositions, what have you, for the last 25 years. Uh, I wasn't always a realtor, obviously. Um, my first career was in law enforcement. I worked in uh, in Toronto. Um, and uh, quickly realized, you know, well, I, I love the job and uh, love the people. That wasn't for me. I was I was meant for different things. And that's I eventually moved into professional real estate. I've been doing that for a number of years. Um, I my my focus in real estate has always been investment oriented. I love the idea of creating things, making things, building wealth through real estate. And, you know, for the last, you know, probably 10 of the 13, 14 years, I've almost been specifically focused on real estate investment. And I've had the the um, the really fantastic opportunities in my career. I've, I've worked with a lot of funds, syndications, REITs, a lot of institutional clients, a lot of retail clients as well. So like they, retail clients would be like you and me, people who are, by, who are trying to build up their portfolios and just create a better quality of life. And it's, it's kind of led me to what I'm doing now, which is really uh, the, a lot of what I do now is is education is uh, teaching people how to look at properties, how to analyze them, how to forecast value, how to build out their plans. And, you know, I find that's one of the biggest, the biggest mistakes people make is they kind of have an idea of, you know, what they want to do, but they just really don't know how to do it. And so that that's what's led me to, to doing what I, I do now, which is I'm now in software development, still, still a realtor, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I still where I still have a key uh, a group of clients I work with for acquisitions and dispositions across all various types of real estate. But now what we're doing is we're building out uh, education platforms and eva evaluation tools and systems to help people properly analyze properties. And if it's a good buy, if it's not a good buy or, you know, what have you, that's what we're doing now. It's really great. exciting. Great. Well, I guess the first thing I should say is, are you even in real estate unless you've got a side gig in terms of either whether it's a software developer in your case, podcast guy in my case, you kind of have to be um, in, in a few different places, whatever those might be. Obviously, I think, you know, of course, with real estate for a lot of us, it's a passion, uh, something that we got into. And for me, it was literally, I was joking with uh, my, my guest yesterday. Uh, we were trying to figure out where both of us connected in terms of when do we both start our interest in real estate. And we, and we figured out it was monopoly. And I don't know if that at all applies to you, but it strangely applies to so many people in real estate that Monopoly is where, is where the bulb first went off and said, wait a minute, this seems like fun. How do I do this for a living? Um, but going back to what you're saying, yeah, so you're obviously, you know, doing that. Uh, for me, it's all, you know, again, it's always interesting to sort of go behind the scenes, sort of peel back the layers. Uh, when I talk to people, yesterday's client, she was actually born in the same hospital as me, which was, uh, and which was just so odd that that would even come up, but it did. So you are, again, before this life, and let's just start maybe from the beginning, where were you born and raised? Yeah, I was uh, I was born in Newmarket. So okay, good old Newmarket. So you're an Ontario guy from I, the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm yeah I'm 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 Ontario through and through. Uh, my uh, my parents, um, my dad, he was a, a big executive for Sony, and that's what brought us to Toronto. And nice. we moved out around '88, moved towards Kingston, a little town called Sealy's Bay, and then shortly thereafter moved into into Kingston, which is gorgeous. If you've never been to Kingston, Kingston's a really, it's a wonderful city. It's a, uh, it's a hidden gem. It's, you know, one of the oldest cities in Canada, uh, was the first capital of Canada actually. And then they moved it to Ottawa. 
And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely stunning here. We're, we're a very institutional market in Kingston. So I think a lot like Kitchener Waterloo. So a lot of a lot of schools, hospitals, corrections, a lot of uh, a lot of government offices in, in Kingston, which is, you know, uh, another it, that also got me into real estate, you know, the institutional type markets and what markets are great markets to invest in as well. And it's uh, Kingston. Kingston's been been a blessing for me. Yeah, it's been great. And, uh, you know, I moved back to Toronto in I think it was 2004. Yeah. End of end of 2004, beginning of 2005 when I got hired with Toronto police. And uh, okay. I spent about a decade there before finally. So uh, there was there was sort of from you, I guess. I, I guess it would be because a lot of friends of mine went also into law enforcement. Was it from sort of high school, um, university, or whatever, and yeah. then I uh, uh, police college? Yeah, yeah. So I, I went to Queens, uh, okay. I went to Queens uh, for football. Like you, I was big into sports, and yeah. uh, and then I said, you know, like I was I um, majoring in sociology. I had a minor in psych, and I'm thinking, like, what am I what am I doing? And, Same, uh, you know what? This is weird. Sociology and kinesiology on this. Uh, stuff. Absolutely no reason, uh, no connection with those yeah. two whatsoever. Uh, some guidance counselor, I think, had a few drinks and told me, uh, you know, this is a good idea for you. And, you know, boy, were they wrong. But, uh, you know, life experiences for both of us, I guess. You remember that eh? when you I and I don't know if they still do this or not, but uh, they would the guidance counselor would bring you in and help you try and pick a job and every job three three things you're good at that's what they told yeah. us some 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 report they printed out you're good at this this and this go do that yeah <laughs> it was Crazy. uh yeah it was funny i remember that i remember being brought into the office and uh, you know i didn't have great great marks in school like i was i'm a, I'm a pretty smart guy i like to think but uh i found school just just the monotony of it killed me and uh, so I think like a lot of young men, I just didn't really apply myself. And I remember sitting in the guidance counselor's office and, you know, he was saying, you know, maybe you can become a laborer, um, you know, maybe we can, you know, we can get you into construction or, you know, maybe you can do some type of landscaping. It was, it was, I remember I was just, and it was all based on my, uh, my, um, um, not diploma, what do you call it? Your, 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 your grades, there was um, your transcript. Oh yeah, yeah. Your, your transcript, and yeah. I remember thinking, man, like these, I have no interest in that. Like, and I said, well, I kind of like the sciences. I wanted to get into marine biology. He's like, well, I just, I don't know, that's going to be for you, Jordan. You know, I think, uh, you know, we, we should, you know, we should get into something a bit simpler. And I, I just, I, 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 you know, it was funny. And now I, I mean, love that, yeah. You know, and it's yeah, and it's you know, you I fast forward, too. To, uh, you fast forward to now, and you know, not to you know, pat myself on the back, but I do very well. You know, I've been very successful and, uh, you know, it's just, it's funny how school can miss it sometimes, <laughs> you know, it, um, but you know, it was, it was, uh, that to me was an eye opener too. You know, it was like, Holy it shit. sounds like you like being told you can't do something or you just basically are said, listen, you're not, that's not for you. You're not going to do this. Uh, I've had family members and this is why I like these podcasts because I can, I can kind of treat you as the uh, psychologist couch, whether or not you've got a degree in that. Uh, I can still tell you this stuff that I've had family members tell me you're never going to make money in real estate. Uh, and that's probably why I did. And it, it, of course I wanted to anyways, but it's also like, okay, uh, I'm proven, you know, and in your case, you're proven that person wrong. Uh, you just have to sort of have a reason and, and, and whatever lights the fire. Uh, I tell my kids again, um, don't listen to anybody else about, you know, where you're going to go, especially now I've got a daughter and just starting college and a son sort of going through the high school life, um, figuring out, you know, figuring it all out. Uh, and I don't know how much of that guidance counselor, um, uh, what do you call it? influence is still part of it, but uh, obviously, yeah, you being told that you should, you know, stick to landscaping and construction. Yeah, that's that's great to do on the weekends at home, but uh, it's probably not necessarily what you'll do. No offense to that, because yeah. for me, that's my entire family is uh, construction, and, yeah. uh, all that stuff, and 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 that's the hardest work to me in the world. Um, waking up every morning, doing that every day. But uh, again, obviously there's more to it. So uh, yeah, we talked about this in the sort of the pre-interview about uh, uh, how many uh, 
guys in the police force, literally like 90% of the gym that I worked at uh, was, you know, police guys. And I, I literally met everybody up and down the line, like some of the really high ups, few of them became clients. So for you, you went from that. And at what point, if you don't mind at, or, or saying it, what, what sort of caused the tip? What, what sort of said, okay, um, you know, this isn't really for me. Let's maybe jump into something else. How, uh, how did that happen? You know, so if we're talking about fast forwarding into my, uh, into my career, you know, one of the things I, I both of my boys um, are, are deaf. Uh, they were born uh, with a really rare condition. It's called Pendrid syndrome. Okay. And, um, you know, my wife had a, a, a gene. It was a, a recessive gene. There was a mutation wow. on that gene. I didn't have anything. Um, so, you know, we didn't really know what had caused the hearing loss. We, we had narrowed it down to this potential Pendrid syndrome. Uh, and we did a, we actually you know, I'm jumping around the story a bit, but we we did a, a generic DNA test called 23andMe.com, mm -hmm. and uh, it identified my wife's mutation. And I remember we brought it to the geneticist at KGH Kingston General Hospital, and he kind of laughed me off. He said, "Oh, this is just hocus pocus, man. I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe the the boys had gotten sick, or they were both premature. It was just a little coincidental. Two boys both have you know significant uh, hearing loss. Yeah." And so long story short, he ended up doing a DNA test and he said, oh, shit, no, you were 100 percent right. The, this mm -hmm. this retail two hundred dollar kit did what we do, which costs thousands. Wow. Um, and I remember just my boys were really young. We were doing a lot of traveling. So we were living in Toronto. We would then go to uh, we were in, going to Chio in Ottawa, just all over the place. To, to, to deal with with the kids and they're hearing they have cochlear implants and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I need to I need to spend some time with my 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 kids. You know, there's mm -hmm. going to be a few challenges here. And I I was kind of having a bit of a I wouldn't say a midlife crisis because I was you know in my 30s at the time. But, you know, I was looking around at a couple of the guys I was working with and I mean, again, lovely people, um, but a lot became very jaded. You know, it's a very it's a really tough job, you know, and it's uh, you're, you're you're always seeing the the worst society has to offer typically. Right. And you're like people call the police when something's gone really really wrong people absolutely are yeah yeah you're not you're not coming over for anybody's birthday party yeah, like, and, and if it is it's usually a bad yes outcome. yeah yes or yeah. like a domestic yeah and so yeah. you know i would see you know a lot of my colleagues on their second third marriages you know living in basement apartments and i said you know i just there's more to there's more to life there's more i want to do i want to spend time with my my family and I, I want to travel. I want to do things. And I love creating. I, I'm, I, and you know, you kind of made a point like, I love it when someone tells me I can't do something. Um, it just fuels me to, to, to kind of prove them wrong. And so I've, you know, I, I remember when I finally said to the, my platoon, I'm like, guys, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done. I've given my two weeks. I, I just I quit, just literally walked away. And they, said like dude you're making the biggest fucking mistake of your life what are you doing mm -hmm. like this is this is you know you're not going to make it and mm -hmm. uh, and i remember after leaving i had a few really close friends and they said wow like i can't believe how many people are kind of making fun of you for what you did and you you left and you walked away and and i just kind of you know i took mm -hmm. it I, I took it all in and it just it, it helped me it fueled me it uh yeah. you know i love like i said i love proving people wrong and i built a really really successful uh, real estate team. You know, I, I started Century 21. We talked about that on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ended up moving over to boutique brokerage and finally into Remax, just because Remax has a really great commercial division, which is a lot of what I do now is is larger multifamily investment property. And Remax was just a good fit at the time. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, I, I built a very successful team. I'm number three globally right now in the entire world. Remax commercial for small for small commercial teams, right. and uh, you know, I just. You know, I, I, I've trained agents and it's just, I, I took that and the, you know, I, it, that was the really, really the big shift for me was just one day I just said, you know, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I got, I just, I meant for more, um, you know, I love teaching and creating and building and, and, uh, you know, I like to be my own boss. Like I, I'm a pretty opinionated person at times. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, like when I feel very passionately about something, you know, I, you know, I, I'm not really going to be persuaded by anybody else to do something. So I saw, there's always, you know, a bit of a, you know, a, a shift between me and my super or not a shift, but a bit of a, sometimes we butt heads with my supervisors when they would want me to do something. I just didn't think it was right. Or, you know, I just, yeah, 
So that, that's what happened. Okay. No, you know what? And again, that sounds very familiar to me because of the fact that when I was working in the gym and I, and I had so many really good friends who were again on the force and again, detectives, uh, again, many of which became clients. I got to hear uh, a lot of those stories that they couldn't tell other people. I, again, whether, whether or not you used, uh, whether or not you ever talked to a personal trainer or, or, or the guys at the gym, uh, we were these like very unusual psychologists. Like we got the whole story, like everything uh, for people who were dealing with the substances, like anybody who was smoking or drinking too much uh, and they needed to sweat it out and, you know, find a new addiction is what I called it. Uh, and hopefully if I, if I made the gym interesting enough for them, they would start that new addiction uh, and put all that energy because it's not it never goes away people who've got any sort of a uh, tendency towards whether you know you're addicted to you know smoking or success you can prop you can not fully redirect it but you, i found that even early in my uh, career i found that you could um so i got to meet a lot of these guys i, I saw them go from uh again police to uh one of my really good friends i mentioned to, to you uh, went from uh police work right into um financial uh you know financial world and he mentioned a lot of the stuff that you did like you know this isn't a really good thing for you and this guy was huge this guy was like six five 300 ripped like the whole thing he looked like like if he walked in the room everything stopped and that's probably a good thing to be when you're a police officer six five 300 and just jacked uh but in his case in his head that wasn't his calling. He had something else he wanted to do. So obviously, uh, good for you on that. And of course, again, I, um, uh, you know, I, I, I definitely, you know, uh, have sympathy for you, but not sympathy in, in the bad way. But I understand uh, what you're going through with your kids. Um, in my on my side of things, my wife is legally blind. So when our kids were born, it was a very there was a possibility that one of them could be. Thankfully. Um, the eyes are not perfect, um, but they're not, it's not blindness. And it's just something that, again, it's hereditary. So it's something that goes through. And it's definitely, uh, for me, even before having kids, I knew that's something about the career that I wanted to choose. I wanted to be one of those involved dads. Um, just because it just, it wasn't a thing maybe when you were growing up, maybe, you know, for certain eras, seventies, eighties, nineties, I don't know if there was a lot of dad, uh, you know, dad life hashtags. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I just, I, I had this really great talk this morning with a mortgage guy that's going to join me on the show. Uh, and we spent most of the time talking about our kids. Um, so to me, like that, that's just, that's just human and it's okay now, uh, you know, to, to be like that. And I, and I'm the worst, I'm one of the worst offenders. I'm one of those dads that'll take my kids to Disney for no reason. Uh, just because it's something that I wanted them to have that memory of. I, I didn't, we, we did some, you know, some road trips, but nothing like that. I kind of wanted to overdo it. Um, so the fact that you've been through all this stuff, obviously from, you know, from the, uh, from the police, uh, and just starting your own business and doing so well with Remax. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, I guess the, the software. Cause I think that's what sort of, um, and this is, it's always has to be this way. That, that's really what drew me uh, to reaching out and, and discussing with you what it is that you do. So uh, let's talk about your, 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 you know, your sort of, your jumping in from the, from police to real estate and then into the software thing. So let's, uh, let's jump into that. And yeah, that's, um, you know, that, that's a great question. And um, what, what I found and, and this, you know, it's just to take a step back a bit, we, we often sure. talk about, um, you know, what makes people an expert and how do you become good at what you do? And, you know, we talk about sales. I mean, geez, you even look at, at the paradigm of shale, sales and and how sales was in the 80s to how it is now. I mean, it's everything's changed. And, you know, what I find now is you're not an expert based on the information you have anymore. What, what makes you an expert today is your ability to curate the information because Frankly, you can learn anything for free now on the internet. I mean, there is just so much information. It's almost like information overload. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you, you can do a quick Google search about how to invest in real estate, and you're hit with so much information that you don't know where to go. And so truly, I believe now what 
you know, 40 years ago, what made you an expert, you know, if you were a doctor was having, you know, access to those textbooks and, and, the, and those records that you could then interpret and provide that to your client or your yep. patient rather. Real estate is no different. And what makes us an expert now is being able to curate all the white noise, you know, in the universe, take it, break it down into something that's digestible and relay it to our clients to make sure that they have a clear understanding of whatever it is we're, we're discussing. And so, you know, for me, real estate investment was no different. You know, you can do a quick Google search right now and you're hit with a hundred thousand different links or sites, you know, sending you in different directions, you know, people trying to sell you courses. A lot of it is garbage to be brutally honest. A lot of people with no experience who just have a really good sales ability. And, you know, from, from a real estate investment perspective, you know, you go back a couple of years ago and all you had access to were just spreadsheets. Most people would create their own Excel spreadsheet and they would try to undertake an evaluation, but real estate is more complicated than that. It really truly is. I mean, it can be very easy, but it becomes easy when you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so for me, one of my biggest challenges as a, as a realtor in sales was helping my clients to make a decision on what property they should buy. I mean, it's simple, right? Like, do you want property A, property B, or property C? You know, and, you know, properties oftentimes, they're all a little bit different. Some have their pros and cons. And, you know, we, I would try and break it down on a piece of paper for them. And I would, you know, I would work through evaluations in different scenarios. And it was complicated because you would end up staring at a bunch of numbers. And, you know, unless you have a background in finance, most people... They, they then shifted into what we would call analysis paralysis, right? Where they would look at it and they would look at three or four or five different potential properties and, and they would look at all the work that I've done mm -hmm. and they weren't able to make a decision. And oftentimes the decision they were trying to make was typically predicated on what is the potential future value of that property and is this a good investment or not? And so, you know, I would, I would sit there and try and walk my my clients through the end of the day, you know, the old adage, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Right. And so I just, I started to build my own systems and my own software to try and break through that white noise and to make things easy for people to understand or digest. And, and so it started off with my own internal Excel spreadsheets, but again, when you create an Excel spreadsheet, it's all numbers. You know, you, sometimes you can put some graphs and stuff in there, but it was still hard to hard to understand. And so mm -hmm. we went to a, a tech company in Toronto and we had them build out a few prototypes. And we started off with our, our MVP, our minimum viable product. We took that, we went to our test subjects, we worked through it. I mean, this has been going on for three years, right? Yeah. And uh, and so we finally came to a version that, you know, was in our opinion, consumer friendly and we could push out to the masses. And basically it uh, lets people look at property very objectively. And, you know, one of the biggest problems I find in real estate investment is everybody does an evaluation a little bit differently. And that's a problem because really there's one way to do an evaluation. There's, there's not five different ways. I mean, there are different metrics you can look at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, there are, there are certain key inputs we require to determine property value. And so yeah. What we've done is, you know, and I, like I told you before, I've worked with a lot of institutions, institutional clients, and I, I've helped design their acquisitions software. So I, I was very familiar with that. And so I know what the banks look for. I know how the banks undertake their valuations. Why not build a software that that uses the best of both worlds? You know, a bank typically looks at current value, but a lot of these institutional clients with their fund syndications or REITs, while they take into account the, the properties. Uh, you know, overall health on purchase, they also look for future value as well. And so we, we combine that process to create a system where you can. So important. You brought that up twice already about the future value yeah. being what people are really buying. And that's something that not many people grasp. So I'm glad you've already hit on that twice. It's, yeah. it's so important. You know, yeah. but even that future value, you know, you have to, your purchase is very important. Right. I mean, honestly, I will tell you this. You make money on the buy. The buy that's it. That's you. that's also very old school thinking that is 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 so important to remind people. Yes, you're only making money when you buy. Yeah. And um, so however you say it, yeah. The buy has to be right. And and you know, yeah. you know, you have to have really strong fundamentals when you go into this. And you know, what what happens is people I find, you know, especially real estate investors, they want to get started in the market. They don't know really how to how to get started. Then they get linked up with a realtor. 
hopefully they're a good realtor not all the time it happens right and then they, they kind of get they get stuck where they think they need to go out and make a purchase really quickly because they want to start their journey but you know what people need to understand is one bad purchase can ruin you forever i mean it, it is this is arguably one of the biggest investments you're ever going to make in your entire life and so it needs to be a good investment absolutely you know, and, and and so you know for me I, I i've broken the system down so we can remove that confirmation bias because what i found is people will will look at a property and they 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 cannot remove the emotion that that the, the, you know and, and really emotion can ruin you in this business and so they want the property to work so bad that they start bringing in their own confirmation biases and they start tweaking the numbers they start reducing the maintenance and the expenses to try and make that number fit and it's really really dangerous and then they you know they they get involved in into one of these purchases and they realize very quickly that holy crap i've made a really bad decision here yep. you know and i you know now for me to get my money back out i'm going to have to put in more money improve the property you know i could be stuck with entrenched tenants and you know look at what paul i mean i'm sure you're aware if you're part of all these real estate forums right now all the people who had over leveraged themselves you know promissory notes and being over leveraged and there's bankruptcies happening left left right and center in this business and it's people yep. who have under who did not have good fundamentals and how they undertook their evaluations because if you follow the steps from a to z and you do a, a thorough analysis of a property i mean the 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 proof is there in the in the, in the summary pages that we generate for our clients and so you know that's that's kind of what what it was a long-winded answer but that's what no. let us create the software because i was just tired of people making bad decisions and not just the buyer i mean yeah oh you know as well as i do when you have a client come to you and they want to make a purchase oftentimes they're relying on the realtor to help them work through these processes yeah because right? the end of the day they look to us as the expert right and so yeah yeah like the software itself is meant for realtors it's meant for realtors and buyers alike it's mm. meant for us to help our clients make these necessary decisions I think uh, again, you, you you've touched on a lot of subjects there, and the fact that again to make uh, any program, and and I've uh, I've also had um, sort of my run-ins, I'll, I'll call them, with app developers over the years trying to create the vision that I had in my head, uh, which is a combination of um, you know uh, rugby contact football years of football and then there's some part in there somewhere that comes up with these in my opinion brilliant ideas but no one else is ever going to hear about them so how do i you know how do i put them out into the world and talk to people of course that's as you know uh you know that's one one subject but there, there's the other part of it which falls into social media uh, in terms of i call it the goldfish um um sort of the the goldfish concern is that uh you know and, and and it ranges everywhere from three to eight seconds before people sometimes will either continue scrolling or drop off the earth and never you know go back again that's that includes this podcast which is why i sort of have a you know sort of a target for trying to keep it um uh, what 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 what's the uh, I guess the, the the term for it is the the long form podcast and there's lots of them out there uh, and I sometimes listen to them but there's no way um, I think with our kind of topic no offense to us but with real estate and with business talk I think it is kind of uh, good to sort of have these sort of you know sort of segments of things that we talk about. So the fact that you've got software that helps to simplify, and I think that's probably, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing as part of your testing is, um, how do you make sure people stay in the software before they get so, as you mentioned, analysis, so yeah. paralyzed with the numbers? Because again, maybe you, I don't know about you, but for my first purchase, I still have like, I think it was five or six pages of my own terrible handwriting um, of all the scenarios about here's the price, here's the mortgage rate, here's this, here's the here's the taxes, all this stuff, writing it all down. Um, and, and it looks like the guy from The Beautiful Mind uh, wrote it. If I look at it now, it makes no sense to me at all. I don't know what I was thinking at the time, though. I'm sure it was crystal clear. Uh, because again, it was all the money in the world. This for me, this was 98, uh, and it was a $140,000 purchase and that kind of money. I, I never even 
considered like it's you know you're bar you're buying a house you don't think of that much money but for me that was that was millions of dollars yeah. in my mind and just the pressure on my shoulders like okay i better get this right um and as everybody who starts off i said you know, i wanted this to be an investment property uh so i started off on the right foot got some bad tenants uh, learned really early trial by fire that, uh, uh, you know, I can't just do this passively. Um, you know, and, and I was kind of just learning my way through, but this was before, you know, uh, software came along and, uh, doing background checks got a lot easier over the last 20 something years. So the fact that you came up with something, uh, you know, the programs that you have, um, I, th I think that's definitely going to be something that people and, and you probably know uh, have benefited from. So what, uh, again, what's the, um, again, as far as like, that's again, that you mentioned one of the programs uh, and how, how many, or how much, how many pieces of software have you put together so far? Yeah. So this is the main piece of software that we yeah. built. There's a few other things we're working on that are in development right now, but it's, you know, and, and just to, you know, we, we talked about, we talked about, made the point about future values. And so that's the other kind of component of this, you know, whether you're a realtor or a buyer mm -hmm. is, you know, you and I both agree you make money on the buy, right? Mm -hmm. So that the, the evaluation of the purchase needs to make sense. We really want to be in a cash flow positive position, but what we do, th because there are different components of the software, which I, I want to, yeah. want to explain to you. And so the, the, the purchase software is one thing. So we, we, we input all of our purchase details into the property, a, a true accounting of you know, the income and expenses. And then when we move, then after that, we get, after we get to that stage, we're, we're provided with a summary of the purchase. So at the end of the day, you know, we don't want to waste too much time if the property doesn't make any sense. Right. So you get a bit of a summary of all the financial details you need to know very, very clearly laid out and nice graphs and dials and numbers. So it makes a lot of sense, very digestible where investors need to be really smart is on that future value how do we realize the future value how do we get from point a to point b you know it's, and, and that's oftentimes where a lot of people get stuck right and so the software is very um um very good at let's say we're talking about a 12 unit apartment building you know and we look at that building and we say okay i'm going to make this purchase here, here's a, a breakdown of the tenant profile. This is how long the tenants have been there. What we try and determine is, you know, what the real probability is of increasing the the, the rent, right? Because we, we we really make money in real estate one way, and that's by increasing our net income. And we can do that a number of different ways by increasing the rent or decreasing the expenses, right? And so what the software does is it looks at the property as a whole and it lets you know what it thinks the realistic probability is on how many units you can improve. So if it's a 12 unit building, we might say, you know, we're going to identify a 36 month stabilization period and we think we're going to flip four units out of the 12. OK, so a third. So the, the system will look at the entire potential future value, but it's going to hone you in on a realistic target value. And that is the important piece to this that no other software in the world does independent like you know when you get into into the large funds and syndications they do use software like this but it's it's very complicated excel spreadsheets which truthfully i've looked at them and they they're they're really hard to understand and so the software like i told you removes that confirmation bias and it directs you to where it thinks the value of the property is going to be because you know when we as the buyer you know, say, shit, I need, you know, to make this work, I need five units. If I can flip five units, I'm cash flow positive. Mm -hmm. One, that's a, a huge mistake, but, you know, five, but, you know, the system says, listen, we're probably going to flip four units. You know, it helps bring you down to reality. And then what it can do is it's going to provide you a new potential future value. And then the software directs you into the refinancing component, if you wish. Again, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, the build your own story you can just do the summary you can do the summary plus plus the improvement or you can do mm -hmm. the summary improvement and the refinance and so you can see your plan a 36 month plan of where you're going to be from start to finish at the end of that three years and so that's what is really important paul is the you know you have to look at things objectively you got to remove that emotion and so so the software i mean it's very complicated the back end of it is complicated yeah yeah the, the front facing that we see as as users mm -hmm. made it very very simple um you know and, and again it, it does a lot more than what i'm describing i could 
sit here for two hours and tell you all the phenomenal features it has, like the portfolio management tools we have to, to track your net worth and equity opportunities. It, you know, there's a really incredible sh collaboration feature so you can share links to clients or clients can share links to you mm -hmm. or partners can share links to each other and then collaborate real time on properties together, yep. which again is very unique. You know, it, it's great for mortgage brokers. You know, I could, I could, if you were my broker, Paul, I could send you all of my work and within 30 seconds, you could import all of my data into your system so you could underwrite the property for me, which is a huge time saver, right? Like, I mean, you probably know as well as I do, Paul, how many of us will go to the broker and say, hey, I want to buy this property, you know, and I've done my evaluation. Can you go do yours? Well, I mean, that mm -hmm. takes time, right? And so at the end of the day, efficiency for me is very important. That's kind of what leads me in my life. How do I make things easier and better? How do I improve things? How do I improve the user experience? How do I make things easier for my clients, my buyers, my sellers, whatever it might be? So awesome. Jordan, yeah. you know what? This has been uh, such a great discussion. And of course, uh, a great podcast to me is always one that's to be continued. Uh, and sounds to me well, like this. To talk. I mean, yeah. we could just talk about, I mean, anything, how to undertake proper evaluations, the breakdown of classification of real estate assets. I mean, all these things, I mean, there's, there's so much to learn. I mean, there's 25 years of knowledge in my head. Right. So it's, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. They're, they're, and, they're and I do want people to be able to reach out to you and this is going to be, I hope when I, um, you know, get all this stuff out there as far as for our present, uh, for our, um, uh, for the posts that we're going to be doing together. I want to make sure that those topics are clear so that, of course, they can reach out to you and have, uh, again, a deep dive into those topics. Because I think um, the one thing about this, of course, this is a public you know, forum that we're doing. We're going to be out there and there's going to be people listening. But the conversations that we have, the sort of the really important life-changing conversations are always going to be one-on-one -on -one or you, know, you and the group of the people that are you know making the big decision. Because a lot of these people, People. Again, some of them are extremely private. Um, one, of, one of the sort of the fun uh, stories I'm going to be sharing this week, uh, up doing a podcast about, is how I had a Blue Jay, um, pretty like pretty pretty high ranking. Uh, baseball player uh, go through one of my listings uh, in the last, I think it was last year or two. And uh, one of the funny things that he did just because of the fact that he was, he was so um, concerned about privacy, he said, can I see the house? Um, you know, can I just have a look at the house uh, before I actually bring my wife? And I, and I, and I didn't understand what he meant by it, but what, what he did was he was looking to make sure that the person that was in the house wasn't a blue Jays rabid fan that would tell every other neighbor on the street, by the way, so-and-so just showed up or so-and-so is moving into the area. Uh, so privacy is, I guess that's sort of a really long-winded story yeah. about how, how important privacy is. But I think once these conversations start with us out here and they know you're, again, you're the guy to talk to about this stuff. Uh, and I'm lo really looking forward to us doing some, hopefully some back and forth uh, collaborations between Kingston and Toronto. Uh, and, and, and you've got, obviously, you've probably got reasons to come back here to drop off deposit checks or referral checks. And I love doing the same. I'm really, uh, I'm really strange about this. I've dropped off referral checks to clients, to uh, fellow agents in Niagara Falls, just because I just decided, okay, kids, we're getting in the car. I'm driving this check up to Niagara Falls and not, not yesterday. Uh, that would have been ridiculous, but um, almost any other weekend or week, I'll say, you know what? It's Friday. I got this check. I got to give this guy. Uh, and I've done this before for, again, other places. And again, I'm looking forward to hopefully, uh, you know, working on something like that with you as we move forward. Uh, and again, thanks so much for joining me today. And what's the best way for people to reach you uh, if they do want to have, again, the yeah. longer version of this con longer sort of like deep dive type conversation with you, Jordan? I'll share a, uh, I'll share my link for you for my, so what, what we've done is we've built in a one-on-one -on -one booking in the website so people can book yep. a one-on-one, -on -one, so totally free. It's nice. It's a 30 minute session. I'll share those with you so you can post those. I'll Please. share, I'll, sh I'll share a link to the website. We are undergoing a new branding. So we were called Burbot. So buy, renovate, re rent, refinance, repeat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, truthfully, the software is so much bigger than that. So we are called property cast. That is the new name. Nice. So property nice. forecaster. Uh, all that branding should be pushed through mid next week. Just taking cool. care of a few, uh, small details, but I'll share all those links with you. Awesome. Uh, so, so people can, people can book in and we can explain to them the software and how it works. Okay. 
Awesome. Thanks again so much for joining me, Jordan. I really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy and I really appreciate you going into, uh, again, life, work, uh, you know, uh, our, our experience with guidance counselors, which again, I can guarantee you that might be the the, the thing that gets the most uh, comments because again, I know we're not the only ones who went through this. Uh, so again, this, I think these real life discussions, I think, uh, again, the ones that I get to have with you guys at conferences and we end up talking for an hour about, uh, again, sports and music and movies and the godfather what, whatever the topic comes up that we're both into uh and we end up talking for an hour for me that's like that's the kitchen table type discussions uh i think you know that podcasts are also you know supposed to be good for so once again thank you so much for your time thanks for joining me today jordan thank you my friend it was okay. a pleasure take care take care